Hello, I'm Tammy Jo Schultz, and I'm here with you today on Live Signing, Premier Live Signing. Dean Schultz, my, my husband, is here with us today, and thank you so much for your emails and for buying one of my books, Nerves of Steel. It talks about a lot of people with Nerves of Steel, and I think that it will be an encouraging book for anyone, whether you're an aviator or not. I also wanted to say, one of the reasons that I'm so excited about this book is for those of us that were on Flight 1380 and our families, sometimes if you know a little bit more about something, it really helps you to put it into perspective and be able to set it aside. And I found that whenever Darren and I went back and listened to the cockpit voice recorder and read the black box information, and then we could, we could understand a little bit more about what went on. At the back of my book, you'll find a few chapters on Flight 1380, and you'll get the cockpit view as well as the cabin view. And so I hope that helps those of us that were on that flight that day and our families to get a little bit more clarity on that. It's also a memoir. It's mostly about what prepared all of us on that day, my story of what prepared me to take care of the things that I needed to do on Flight 1380, April 17th, last year. All right, now um, I believe we're ready to start taking some questions. Well, we are, we're here. You can, I think across the bottom of your screen, you'll see premiercollectibles.com uh, slash steel, I believe, if, uh, if you want to go there, that's where you can buy a book and ask Tammy Joe a question. And, um, you want to get started? Sure. All right. Well, there's all kinds of questions and some just comments. Uh, hold on. I need help with this. Uh, so Charles in Shawnee, Kansas says, I'm ordering this book for your uh, college friend, Carla Johnson Sunberg. Oh, Carla. Well, first of all, Charles, thank you. Thank you for getting Carla a book. Carla was in my class. She was an amazing uh, lady back then. And I know that she's, uh, she's just done some incredible things, going to Russia as a missionary, and now I think she's back in Kansas also. So thank you. Thanks, Steve, uh, or Charles. The next one, this is interesting. Um, Stephen from Victoria, Texas, ah. which my dad lived in Victoria for a while. Uh, says, a year ago, I was involved in an airplane accident as a pilot. Any words of encouragement while I get ready to get back into the airplane? Stephen, I do have some words for, of encouragement for you. One thing that I found helpful was actually looking into it uh, when you have time at zero airspeed on the ground and get, get any information you can about it so that the puzzle pieces of that day or that hour start coming together. Because I think just like a, a real puzzle, when it's a part, it, it kind of calls you to come fix it. And whenever you get that information, it'll put together that puzzle and help you uh, set it aside, if you like. And I, I understand you're getting ready to get back into flying. Do it. What a great time to fly. I don't know if you're, it's a hobby or if it's an occupation, but you obviously had what it took to fly in the first place and nothing has changed. You've only gained information and experience. So I'm excited that you're headed back to do it. So how long did you take before you got back in the cockpit? Well, I, I went back uh, three and a half weeks later. Now our company was gracious and gave us as much time as we needed. And so I didn't go back and stay flying a full schedule, but I went back three and a half weeks later, just really because I, I needed a little slice of normal in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a little different situation in that I was the captain, I was in charge, I had the, the yoke, so to speak. And so those that were in the back, that didn't have that information, it was a little different for them. But um, yeah, three and a half weeks. All right. How about Tricia from Happy Texas? 
Trisha says, uh, what advice do you have for my daughter who wants to fly for Southwest Airlines in the future? She also has um, heard you speak at Women in Aviation Conference and reported to us it was the best speech she had ever heard. Well done. Thank you, well Trisha. Done. Thank you for inspiring those young female pilots following in your footsteps. So what advice uh, would you have for Trisha's daughter? Oh, do it. That's it. Two words. Do it. There couldn't be a better time in history, and you live in the best country in the world right now to start flying. There are scholarships available. Uh, women in aviation have scholarships. EAA has a Young Eagles program. Go online and airliners, uh, the commercial airline world has realized that the shortage of pilots is real and it's upon us. So they are also offering scholarships. If you go to CaptainSchultz.com, and my name is spelt with no C, no Z, CaptainSchultz.com, there's some links to organizations that offer scholarships. And you know what, even if you wind up not choosing to continue taking lessons or you choose to make it a hobby, not an occupation, the meteorology, the physics, the math that you that you learn along the way, they're they're just part of making you more aware of the incredible world you live in. So I would say do it. So you're pro flying. Pro flying. Okay, definitely. good. I just wanted to clarify. All right. Um, Mindy from Marietta, Georgia uh, writes in a non flying related question. What is your favorite outdoor activity? That's tough because I love the outdoors. If I could, I would live outdoors completely. Um, oh, favorite outdoor. I would have to say right now, it, it would probably be golfing. Um, I'm not a great golfer, but it's outside and there's a little personal competition in every swing. So golfing, how about you? Um, fly fishing. Oh, that's a very close second for me. I do like that. Again, I'm not real good at it, but I hold my own. Yeah, you do. Sure. And I like doing it up at the Navajo Dam. Uh, Quality Waters, just on the downside of Navajo Dam near my mom and dad's place in Aztec, New Mexico. One of the great things about fly fishing is even if you don't catch any fish, you're usually in some of the most beautiful country in the world. Oh, definitely. So... Great place to uh, spend some time, great way to spend some time outdoors. And also, this is what's kind of fun about fly fishing, is all the animals ignore you. If you're in the middle of the river, they tend to ignore you. So you get to see a lot of animal antics that you wouldn't if you were on the ground right. uh, or on the river bank. Yeah. So. Yeah. And sometimes you get to see other fly fishermen antics as well. Now, that's not fair. Oh. I mean, when somebody falls down the river, it's not to be laughed or at catches himself in the ear with a Oh, now that, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of funny. Yeah. All right, uh, Alice C, Alicia, I'm sorry, Alicia. Alicia from Chino, California um, says, your story is an inspiration that not even I can find words to express. I would like to know during the hardest struggles, uh, did you ever feel like giving up or when times just kept working against you, what helped you push through? Alicia, thank you for that question because I, I think we all get to a wall sometimes or feel like we get pushed into a pit of despair. And, you know, I, I have to say that one of the things I fell back on when I felt like I had just been, I, I hate to use a cliche, but kicked in the teeth and I had no recourse, it felt like. And, um, Quite frankly, being a Christian, I, I felt like I had a solace in my faith. And so that was one place that I felt like was bedrock for me. But I looked at what is my motive for being here? Why am I here? And my merit in being here. And if my, if my motive was noble and my merit was up to standards, then I pressed on and oftentimes I put that same test to the people or the things that were opposing me and just looked at what was their motive and if it wasn't noble then I didn't worry about their motive and having my worth in Christ certainly 
uh, buoyed me up through those times. All right. This is from one of our own. I say oh. our own because I'm a Southwest pilot too. And Christina from Fleming Island, Florida says, are you still flying for Southwest and will you continue to? As a current flight attendant in Southwest, it would be an honor to fly just one leg with you. Also excited to get the Young Readers Edition for my nine-year-old niece. Oh, thank you, Christina. And I look forward to flying with you. Uh, yes, Dean and I both uh, are still working at our day jobs. And so um, please, if, if you happen to get on just commuting or flying with your, your family or friends, look up in the cockpit and say hello. All right. Thank you, Christina. Justin. Oh, just a minute. Yeah, Before you do that, yeah. I have to tell you, I'm wearing a very special uh, Bracel wristband yes. bracelet today. Emmy, uh, uh, Emmy Jones, yes. who is my neighbor, made this for me for this trip. So I just wanted to give a little shout out. Thank you for my good luck bracelet. And hello to her little brother, Kaysen. Yes, Kaysen. I'm sure you were helpful. <laughs> they're, they're our neighbors. Um, Justin from Maple Grove, Minnesota asks, what was your immediate thought when the emergency began? My immediate thought was I thought we'd been hit by another aircraft. And, um, and that I, I wasn't sure that we would would uh, keep all the parts on the aircraft right. till landing. That was my most immediate thought. Then you had to shift gears pretty quickly and think about other things. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Carol from Hill Rose, Texas, sounds like uh, she's one of ours as a Navy member. Oh, uh, nice. She just says thank you uh, for what you do very respectfully. Lieutenant Commander, United States Navy. So, thank uh, you, Carol. Carol, shout out to the Navy. Um, now, I have to say, Dean and I were both Navy pilots, A7s and F-18s, and love the Navy. Our son, Marshall, he he abandoned ship and went Air Force. Um, and we asked him if that's how a good son rebels. Mm -hmm. And his answer was, he said he was restoring honor to the family name. He was headed to boot camp. We couldn't send him off with a retort, but we're still working on one. He may get to come home for Christmas, or sure. he may not. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dennis from Perrysburg, Ohio, uh, doesn't have a question. He just wanted to let you know that he has, he is a grandpa. We just became grandparents. We got that promotion this week. Yes, me and pops. Um, He's a grandpa to eight girls oh. and two great-granddaughters. Uh, Dennis is a little bit ahead of us. Yes. But, uh, yeah, he's got eight uh, granddaughters and two great-granddaughters, and he just says thanks for being a great example. Dennis, that is high praise, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. All right. Uh, Eva from Forney, Texas our home state. Um, what advice can you offer to my 15-year-old twin girls in becoming a pilot? We've kind of covered that one a little bit. but uh. Oh, Eva, happy to answer your question. I think girls have so many just natural uh, qualities that very much lend to aviating multitasking, uh, all the things that you learn growing up as a girl really help. I mean, I think about cheerleading, tumbling, those things were great when it came to flying uh, air to air um, combat because you're, you're, you're upside down and sideways and if you're used to doing that on the ground, it's not, it's not very startling in the air. Mm -hmm. but, but whether you're doing sports or music or arts or reading, um, all those things create a great pilot. So you don't need to check your girl card to become a pilot. They, um, I, I'm excited. I hope that they at least go get a flight. You can go to captainschultz.com and find some links where you can get scholarships and, and look into it. Yes. 
Um, Brian from Sparks, Nevada wants to know how did the aftermath of Flight 1380 change your life? Brian, um, I, obviously um, it, it changed things. Now, our life was due to change in, a, in about a month anyway because our youngest was graduating high school and headed to the Air Force Academy. But this flight certainly put a spotlight on my life that I hadn't had before. And I had um, a lot of the things that I did, I still do. And I still coach Javelin, I still uh, work with first through fourth graders at a high risk school. We have tea, cookies, and chocolate and every Monday's Monday. And so there's some of the things that stayed the same. Obviously, as a pilot, I conjugate gr verbs uh, slowly, so writing a book was not initially, I think, in my path. But I also, Dean and I, had partnered in mentoring young ladies in a prep school at a university nearby. And just getting together with them and, and their questions and our experiences, and they had, they had kind of pimped me to, to write a book which I thought was not necessary. But I think that writing a book has helped not only me to put a few things in perspective, but to take those beads of experience and put them on a lanyard so that they're accessible to other people. I know that I learned so much from the people that went before me, not just women, men and women. I mean, my first few heroes in life were men. Um, and so I think that all came together and that's, part of the big change that has happened in my life. And then um, getting to share uh, with different groups across the country some of the lessons learned and some of the perspective that we can, we can take with us mm -hmm. through those things. Well, Brian, I can tell you, uh, having gotten to tag along for a year and a half with Tammy Jo. Um, he never tags along. He's right beside me. Uh, We've gotten to do some really cool stuff. So what do you think is kind of maybe the top or some of the really great things we've gotten to do? Well, I, I will say that we've met some incredible people that we still keep in touch with. And that, that has been a, a real blessing. Mm -hmm. Probably bubbled up to the top would be Samaritan's Purse with Franklin Graham and his family and... Alaska at the OHOP uh, retreat and just ministering to our wounded warriors and their spouses. And uh, I, I think that the family is a building block of any culture. And so making sure that those marriages that are so stressed under um, not only a spouse, a, a wife or a husband being gone and, and combat, but coming home with some scars from that, um, keeping those those marriages together so that those homes stay together, so that those children and and the husband and wife's hearts are are healed together, has been probably that would be number one for me. Do you recall getting to go to the Oval Office? Oh, now that was a big one too. All right, truly. How was that? Amazing. Um, the president and his administration asked us to the Oval Office, which all of the crew agreed that to be in a country where you're asked if you would like to come and not told you will appear, that in itself is a blessing. But they extended the invitation, they opened the invitation to include not just the crew, but our family. And the um, the, the passengers and their spouses that got up during the flight to help, um, very generous. And, and then making sure that we had an incredible guide to go through both the Capitol and the White House. Mm -hmm. It was stirring just to, just to be reminded of some of the things in our history in this incredible experiment in democracy that has never been done or succeeded before. 
second only to the President of the United States? I mean, going to the governor's mansion? Oh, yes, yes. Governor Abbott invited us there, uh, and Cece, the First Lady, uh, to take a tour of the, the governor's mansion and then getting to go back on another occasion. And they have just been so gracious, and um, we live in a great state. I know every state feels the same about their First Lady and, and Governor, but it was a thrill to meet ours. Yes. All that to say, it's been a pretty exciting year and a half, Brian. Um, thanks for asking about that. Uh, now, this question makes me wonder if Arnold from San Diego might just be a first officer with Southwest Airlines. It doesn't say that, but he asks, who is your favorite first officer to fly with? Okay, Arnold, now <laughs> you're putting me on the spot on purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, gonna, I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna call your bluff. He's sitting right beside me. He's a captain now, but he was my first first officer uh, for my first two captain trips. So I felt like he really kept an eye out for me. But I have flown with some amazing men and a few women, uh, all of which have been great. So I hope that answers your question. And I in turn can say she was my favorite first officer. Because <laughs> That's when true. I upgraded, she He'd was my, better say she that. Was my first first <laughs> officer. Um, all right. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, Helen from Denton, Texas has no question at all. She just wants to say thank you. Helen, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, Tink, are you keeping track of which ones you Honey, signed? It's all in the master plan. I'm lost. I'm, this is all very exciting. This sounds I'm like we're at home. Lost. Are yeah. you are you on top yeah. of this? Honey, I'm lost. I'm it's I'm on it. I'm it's on the way it. it is. But I'm a good baggage carrier. Oh, I thought for a minute you were gonna say you're a good baggage. You are not baggage. Oh, stop. Um, Tink from Center Point, Texas, which is just right down the road from where we live in Bernie, Texas. Uh, said you pushed my wheelchair to the baggage claim once in San Antonio when there were no wheelchair guys around. That oh. is positively outrageous service. Well, you know what? It was my pleasure to to push you there. And I remember we had a good chat, so I felt like I gained as much as you did. All right. Thanks, Tink. Uh, and we'll see you at the HEB in Bernie. Um, Nancy... I'm not even sure. Is there a town in Tennessee named Saudi Daisy? That's where Nancy lives. That's Saudi pretty cool. Chattanooga. Near Chattanooga. Okay. Oh, well, it's confirmed. It's, yeah, we, we've got confirmation that Nancy from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, asks, uh, similar to a previous question, what was going through your mind as the plane was going down? Well, um, you know what? I, I will take it from the point of we were unable to communicate because of the noise. We were unable to see because of the shuttering of the aircraft and a, a bunch of smoke being pulled into the cockpit from the explosion. And then we weren't able to breathe either from the rapid depressurization. So that can be isolating. And adrenaline kicked in. And I remember thinking, when, when there's adrenaline involved, you can think a lot in a very small space of time, but it feels very leisurely. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking um, that not all the pieces may stay on until we get it to a runway. And that takes my mental thought process to the cliffs of what if. And that was, if it doesn't, what happens? And I realize it may be the day I meet my maker. Mm -hmm. And that's when I stopped and I just stopped short of the cliff and um, had a calm because I realized I wouldn't be meeting a stranger that I meet with him every day. So the calm that you hear reflected on my voice and the calm that I had to make a lot of decisions coming down for the next 20 minutes came from that little moment in time of, of a decision uh, or a two choices. Bad news, that was the bad news. The good news, we were still flying. And I thought, as long as we're flying, we'll just keep working <clears> on <throat> it. So, does that answer the question? 
Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, okay. I mean, obviously, as as you continued down from 32,000 feet, you had a lot on your mind. Um, uh, you know, that was that initial thought. But uh, you, you and Darren both had your hands full. Right. Um, we, we both really, from the initial startle of it happening, then you just treat the symptoms. Um, y we had a number of emergencies, and you couldn't... Initially, we couldn't even communicate or read the checklist. So we really prioritized and keeping the aircraft, control of the aircraft was the priority. Um, analyzing what was going wrong and, and taking the, the actions that were appropriate to prioritize what we addressed and then maintaining a situational awareness so that we were always headed towards a destination. And those four um, headers were really our priority that we kept cycling through. Having great flight attendants, Shanique Mallory, Rachel Fernheimer, Catherine Sandoval in the back, knowing that they were taking care of the passengers. We didn't worry about that. They communicated later on and, and told us things that they needed. They needed us to slow down um, and, and just different things. Um, we left that to the back mm -hmm. and we dealt with the aircraft, which was a handful mm -hmm. coming down. Okay, so uh, we've actually, they had some questions about when the emergency started, what you were thinking coming down. Maybe interesting to tell them a little bit about um, how did that day start? What was. Uh, well, um, I, I have a habit in life of having my quiet time. Uh, at home, it's usually a thermos of tea and my Bible, and I take it out and feed the dog, the birds, the deer, and our little miniature horses, and then have some quiet time there in the well house. On the road, it's in a hotel room, but the routine is basically the same. And I got up early. We used to have family devotions around our breakfast table, but everybody has grown up now. So I send a little um, a scripture and, on a picture to my family every day. And so that day it was from Colossians, do what you do as unto the Lord. And headed down to the lobby. When we got to the airport in Nashville is where we started the day. Um, Darren went ahead to get the airplane ready while I grabbed coffee for the crew. And we met the flight attendants there at the airplane. And we all got together for our, our morning briefing. And, and so that was kind of the beginning of our day. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, all right, we've got another question. Are you ready? Yes, sir. <coughs> Cheryl from Littleton, Colorado. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, Hi, Cheryl. Says her son just passed his first solo uh, for the U.S. Air Force. Oh, right. excellent. Again, our son is a second-year student at the Air Force Academy. Um, Cheryl's son would like to be a, an astronaut, pilot oh, a spacecraft. Very nice. Um, but that's, uh, we'll leave that for another day. I appreciate that, Cheryl. We, we're not astronauts, so we can't tell you what it's like. But <laughs> what words of wisdom might you have uh, for, I think, her son learning to fly various planes um, on your way to flying jets. Basically, words of advice for, uh, oh, for learning how to fly. Whatever aircraft you're in is the most important aircraft in the world. And if you just take that isolated, compartmentalized idea that it's not the pointy-nosed jet that you want to fly later or the big heavy that you want to fly around the world later. It's this one. It's this cockpit that's the most important. It's this aircraft. And learn it. Learn the systems. Learn your scan. Learn whatever you need. And truly, what you put into it is what you get out of it. I know that's cliche, but it's true. Mm -hmm. and, and enjoy it. I, I feel like there's so much in life that if I hadn't been so concerned about what was next, mm -hmm. I would have enjoyed what I was doing a lot more. Mm -hmm. So enjoy what you're flying right now. Absolutely. And I don't know if the Air Force says it. In the Navy, it was attention to detail. 
and that uh, that what you learn now in a little airplane will transfer to a big airplane. Um, so that's it. Yeah, enjoy the ride and study hard. All right. Meredith from Raleigh, North Carolina wants to know. This oh, is a tough one. I love flying in there. Yes. What is your favorite scripture verse and why is it so meaningful to you? That's a hard one. That's a hard one. I mean, every, it seems like every other day when I open up my Bible, there's a new one there that I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Um, I'll tell you one of my newest favorite ones, and it kind of has to do with the book, is Psalm 45 1. Um, my heart has a happy theme. I address my verses to the king. My, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And it just reminded me of how God's grace is incredibly deep. Mm -hmm. And being redeemed where you're not packing around all that um, garbage that we've all done, said, been a part of, and realizing I am free of that. I have no reason to hang my head. That is wonderful. But the fact that he cares about the countenance of our heart, he wants us to be heads up and smiling. And so that just spoke to me. And having written a book recently, um, it made me realize that, you know, when our, when our words are ready, like a writer's pen, uh, to express that. And we live in a world that it's so easy. And I think it was easy back in the Middle Ages to be negative. It's just so easy. We run downhill so naturally mm -hmm. um, that it's, it's important <laughs> to get your head up and, and look uphill and mm -hmm. be, ready for, um, be ready for a good day and look for the good that we have right, right here in front of us. Amen. Um, so this one is really cool. Uh, it's not a question. It's just a statement. From, All right. I'm from always. Julia in San Antonio. Hi, Julia. Hope I see you. Uh, and her husband, Joe. She just wants to say thank you because they were on your flight. Oh. Well, Julia, thank you for your question. And I do pray. I pray for us that we're on flight 1380, all of us. And I pray that you're you're just back in the swing of everything and that if you need to fly, you do it with no no fears. Um, there's one of my favorite scriptures actually is 2 Timothy 1:7 talking about we're not given a spirit of fear but a spirit of power, mm -hmm. love and self-control. And so I hope that reading this book, it's just a couple of chapters at the end that are about Flight 1380, but I hope that the perspective from the cockpit, as well as me getting to get Andrew Needham's perspective from the cabin, helps to weave that together and, and give you a, a good, clear view that you can then set aside and look at it when you need to, think about it when you want to, and it's not bearing down on your thoughts all the time. Thanks for your bravery. That day, everyone displayed such courage and such nerves of steel. Everyone that day. I was so, so impressed and so proud to be a part of that group. I've heard her brag on you and Joe and all those other folks often. Uh, Julia, so hopefully we'll uh, get to meet you someday. You live in San Antonio, we're just up the road in Bernie. Yes. All right. Uh, I don't know if it's legal to say that we're doing a Barnes and Noble signing. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. In October, the 19th, oh. in San Antonio. Barnes and Noble signing uh, on right. four, Loop 410 at San Pedro at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So if I wasn't supposed to say that, just take all that back. Uh, all right. Uh, I could see you there either way. Herb from uh, Oxford, North Carolina. 
has a question that I think probably a lot of people are wondering about. Okay. Good question, Herb. He says, I was wondering uh, what your thoughts are on the 737 MAX and if it will be back in service soon. Thanks and stay safe. Okay. Well, I can tell you that I've flown Boeing 737s for 25 years now. And starting with the 200, 300, 500, 700, 800, I personally haven't flown a MAX. My husband, Dean, who's flown there 24 years, has. Mm -hmm. um, I just never had one at the jetway waiting for me. But I have put my family on every <laughs> Boeing that Southwest flies and have done so with a completely uh, clear mind and happy heart. Uh, and Boeing makes a great aircraft, so I will be happy to see the MAX back in service. And I know that they're doing improvements to it, so it'll be even better. Mm -hmm. It is a great airplane. And yeah, we would put our family on it any day. Uh, all right. Samantha from Las Vegas, Nevada has a question. How can I get over my fear of heights to become a pilot? You don't have to. That's, I, the, that's I, the truth, I Samantha. I completely agree. I don't like heights. I, I'm a pilot. <laughs> there's so many of us that don't like looking over a cliff or looking over the top of a very high building. When you have a jet underneath, a jet engine or two mm -hmm. underneath you, it's a whole different uh, or even game. just a little piston engine out oh, in front of true. you. Oh, true. Absolutely. Yeah. When you when you start flying in a Cessna, we have a little Cessna, and it's completely different. It it it's not even the same at all. So don't yeah. don't get over your fear of fly, or fear of heights before you start flying. Just go flying. It'll probably help you get over your fear of heights. And she does. Thank you, Samantha. She says that uh, Southwest is the only airline she has ever flown on because they're her favorite. Thank you very much. It's an awesome airline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, Samantha, get started. Uh, flying is so fun. Um, all right. It's fun, and it dusts off some of the corners of your mind that you wouldn't normally use. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it it creates such a a great. Um, energy in your mind because you have to do hand eye you have to have hand eye coordination so you're using your body your rudder pedals with your feet your your controls but you're using your mind too and so it's this complete um i i refer to flying as this taming and organizing of a thousand details into an economy of mind and motion and it's it's wonderful Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely love it. Uh, all right. I'm sorry. Uh oh. I think I just bumped his. He's in trouble now. Probably I'm in trouble. Oh. We're back. Oh. We're back because I'm a technological <laughs> wizard. And I've I always thought of you as a geek. <laughs> <laughs> In the I nicest a technological way. Wizard. Oh, okay, yes. wizard. There you um, go. All right. Uh, I'm just making sure we're on track. We've got a lot of things to do. How okay. are you doing on the book signing? Done. Done. What about these back here? Well, I'm not sure. You're done. Am I? Yeah. You've done very well. All right. You know what? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I just got an idea on my iPad. It was a note from outer space. Mm hmm. What is it? Sure. We're going to play a little game. Oh, just no. to kind of lighten things up. You know, I, you know, I was on that quiz show. Um, yes, you Fox were. Fox Nation. And I'm, sometimes I'm really good at games. Sometimes I'm not. Go. Well, you may need to get, you want to get a drink of water. I mean, this is going to be fast. Okay. 22 questions in two minutes. Well, I'm going to get a drink of water. I'll I mean, time it. Mm -hmm. I'll do the timing. So I'm ready. And I'll let you know if you get any of them wrong. Where were you born? Farmington, New Mexico. Who would you want to play you in a movie? Well, <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there are so many mm -hmm. that it's not even about who the actress is. It's who would I want to look like or be. Right. You know, and so I think about, you know, Sandra Bullock, Gail Godot, or Gay Godot. I'm, 
Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I know who you're talking about. I, Wonder Woman. The, no, not me. No, you. She is. Yeah. Um, so. Uh. We have completely blown two minutes out of the water. But here we go. What was your first job? Hmm. My first, literally, my first job was scooping uh, organic fertilizer out of stock trailers. It's not, it's not exciting. Were you good at it? I was really good at it. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, so that I could move out of that job. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, that stuff rolls downhill. Keep them moving. You're wasting my <laughs> what, two minutes. What is your biggest fear? Hmm. Biggest fear. God tells us not to be fearful. I know, and I don't spend a lot of time being afraid. I'm, mm -hmm. but it's not that I'm fearless. Um, biggest fear. Let's move on. Yeah. Well, I will say, you know what? One of my biggest fears mm -hmm. is that I don't, <clears throat> um, that I don't follow through with what I should, or that, you know, that I offend someone without even knowing it, and mm -hmm. then I don't have the chance to go back and say that was either I didn't mean it that way or that was wrong of me. So I don't like to give offense. That's pretty serious. That's not like I'm afraid of the dark. Or... Oh, okay. Okay, that kind of fear, mm -hmm. like surface fear. Mm -hmm. My One of my biggest fears is when we took our kids to Alaska and went backpacking through bear country and we both had to carry pistols because it was bear country and that's what they told us we had to do. And so I was thinking, you know, I, our children are young and juicy and they're going to be, I, I didn't like that. So in a nutshell, you're afraid of grizzly bears. Grizzly bears. Eating your children. That was it. That okay. was it. Yep. They didn't. They didn't at all. We brought no, them home it with us. turned out to be a great hike. Uh, who makes you laugh the most? <laughs> um, okay, to be very honest, it's that's that, what we're doing. Okay, we're it's that crazy honest. little, is a um, British or Australian boy that at Christmas time there was this video that was out there about this little boy that said he was going to give Santa an uppercut. And, but he was accused of being on the naughty list by his dad. And I'm sorry, that just, it still cracks me up thinking about it. He may grow up to be a comedian. I know. Yeah. Whatever your name is, you were good. All right. Uh, what is the one thing you need to have in your fridge at all times? You can't say tea because you don't put it in the fridge. Right. But that tea is, one, is one of the things I, I have at all times. Yeah. Um, at all times, I would have to say Greek yogurt. What's your greatest accomplishment? Being a mom. Amen. Who is the most interesting person you met recently? That's a toughie. Oh, my. You've met some interesting people recently. I have. Okay, I, I can't really pick just one. Um, but I'll pick a couple. So, and I'm picking these two because we've stayed in touch and seen each other again, not not under official, um, hello, I'd like to meet you, mm -hmm. but um, Martha Raddatz, mm -hmm. and uh, she and I shared a <clears throat> mutual friend, Captain Rosemary Mariner, who passed on this year. She was my skipper in the Navy, mm -hmm. but um, then uh, Franklin Graham, mm -hmm. and getting not only to meet him, but to get to know him and spend some time around him. And he invited our whole family up to be a part of OHOP. Mm -hmm. And so that has been cherished time and friendships. Outstanding. Uh, and what's your middle name? Joe. Joe. With no E. Right. Uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? People with pet peeves. Uh, what is the last book you read? Hmm. I'm reading two right now. I'm trying to think. I mean, it's such a small book, I probably don't get credit. Uh, but I just finished the book of Jude. If mm -hmm. you have a Bible, you know that's a very small book. But I just, uh, it gets skipped over. So I thought, 
give him his due. It's and, a great one. And I've been re I finished that, but I have to tell you two books I'm in right now that are pretty amazing. The Long Road Home by Martha Raddatz and T.H. Uh, Brin, I, I don't even know him, but he wrote the book, uh, The Will of the People and why the American Revolution did not spiral into this horrible bloody revolution that the French and the Russian and the Chinese revolutions did. And that is fascinating. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite hobby? Mm. The only lifelong hobby I've been able to keep is reading. Um, we didn't have a telephone or a television growing up, so reading started early for me. And so that would be the one that I've been able to keep. The indoor, outdoor, walking. I love nature. What's your uh, guilty pleasure? Chocolate. Uh, do you have any? Uh, with tea, because then your mouth is nice and warm and the chocolate melts better. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, do you have any hidden talents? You know, well, like, can you? Well, and this, it, it, it will probably remain hidden, but I still write songs. No, your hidden talent is you, you communicate with the animals. You oh, know what they're thinking. My, my family makes fun of me for that. But I do predict kind of what they're thinking because then they do it. It's just from growing up around a lot of animals. Uh, and yes, I can tell what they're thinking. I know. I'm just like, you sort tell of. what I'm thinking. Uh, what color is your toothbrush? Green. Um, did it start out green? That is disgusting. Ooh. Uh, what is your secret snack? Hmm. You know, when you chocolate. go in the pantry. Yeah, chocolate, chocolate again. Yeah. Um, how do you take your coffee? Uh, I take, and honestly, I usually pour it out and use hot water to make tea. I'm a tea drinker. I love tea. It has to be decaf, but I know how to decaf it, so I'm set. What is the last movie you saw in theaters? You'll have to help me. I don't remember. Since uh, about a year and a half ago, I've been pretty busy and um, day job and night job, so I, I don't remember the last one. Nothing's help going me. to mind. I got nothing. I can't remember. You know what? I took my nephews to a movie and uh, it was a Captain Marvel movie. Okay. Yeah. My nephews, we went to see okay. a Marvel movie. Yeah, I didn't go on that one. Uh, what is the last? It was an accident that you weren't invited. Oh. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm just now hearing that y'all went to see Actually, we kind of do a lot of that kind of fun stuff while you're flying. Out earning a living. Just so that you will have a family. leisurely time at home when you get home. I'm thinking of you, always right, just right, thinking of right. you. Right. So we do a lot of fun stuff while you're gone. What is the last gift you gave me? Oh, you? Well, it doesn't have that. I just added that part. Yeah. yeah. Well, the last gift I gave, and then we'll cover you, um, was a pair of charted all yoga pants. It is, they're, they're incredible. If you're looking for Christmas gifts, I have to tell you these, I bought a bunch of them because that's what I'm giving. Um, they're aviation charts, so they're very colorful, and it's you can have them printed in your area chart. And there's yoga pants, there's a pretty shawl, there's a tablecloth, I mean, you name it, shirts. So I gave a pair of charted all yoga pants to Christina, Christina, my friend from Thomas Nelson. She's hiding right over there behind the camera. I don't know that she has a with her, or I'd have her model, mm -hmm. but they're the cutest things. Um, what's the last gift you gave me? <laughs> that's good <laughs> I can't remember either <laughs> now that okay that's how important it was and that's how important it was to you oh my oh, goodness, my goodness. Oh, we've got to do better bad right here on TV and everything we've got to do better yeah um, what uh, cause I is, gave you this it wasn't you lent it to me that's no, not that's really a true. gift you told me you definitely were going to get it back okay so. cute. next question yeah uh -huh. Uh, what cause is dear to your heart? Well, I think I already touched on it. Um, Samaritan's Purse, OHOP Ministry. Um, so that that is 
-hmm. That would be it. But It'll if we have time, yeah, which I think I'm doing yeah. really well uh, on my two minute, 20 minutes you're to always, do the yeah, 22 yeah. questions. It's two uh, questions in 22 minutes would, is what you're working on. I would have to say that um, international justice mission is another really great one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, MAF, MAF. Yeah, Mission Aviation Fellowship. Yes, mm -hmm. it's it a was. Great organization. Yes, he was my first real life hero, mm -hmm. Nate Saint, the pilot whose book I. He didn't write the book. The book was written about him, Jungle Pilot, and um, incredible. And I and we've gotten involved a little bit with them, mm -hmm. and um, what they do all around the world is amazing. They they transport not just missionaries and translators, but they, Doctors Without Borders, um, and you know, if there's someone in a, a remote village that is having a baby and things aren't going well, these guys will transport them to medical mm -hmm. attention. And anyway, the, they change lives. They do, and if you're a young pilot, MAF is looking for pilots, and they get to fly and frankly, I want to go to their flight school where they teach their pilots how to fly in the mountains. Bush piloting. It's incredible. Amazing. So, uh, yeah. Mission Aviation Fellowship, if you're uh, a young pilot and, and looking for something to do very meaningful while flying airplanes. You know what? They also, though, they also use people that are not pilots mm -hmm. for teaching, um, mm -hmm. for all kinds of different, uh, the different levels of aviation, you know, organizing communicating, but they're a great organization. They are. Uh, what is number one on your bucket list? Hmm. I mean, I hadn't really looked that far down the list. So I would have to say one of the things on my bucket list is I would love to take our family, mm -hmm. go on a just a short little uh, vacation. Um, we are talking about going on a river cruise. That's uh, on a bucket list. Well, that's true. That's on our bucket list. But I was thinking with our new grandbaby that it, uh, yeah, that would be, Liam. He, he would not like that right now. So there is an incredible place and it's not advertised. So this is kind of breaking news. It's not advertised, but they do have a website called Cibolo uh, Cibolo Creek Ranch mm -hmm. out in West Texas and it is like going back in time. Mm -hmm. They have rebuilt a fort and it looks like it's decorated by Ralph Lauren. The people there are the most wonderful people and there's everything there. I mean hiking, horseback riding, four-wheeling, uh, fishing right there in their own little pond at, or lake. That You're the, like a walking advertisement. For I'm sorry. Person. That's on my bucket list, to take my family there. Yeah. Um, where do you want to go that you've never been? Venice and, um, uh, oh, it starts with a V also. Uh, Victorville. No. Oh. Uh, although, hello uh, to Virginia Schultz in Victorville. No. No, she's in Victoria. Oh, Oh, that sorry. was close. That was, was close. close. That was so close. I'm so sorry. Um, she's probably not watching on the Come computer. Come on, keep okay. going. No, that's it. You knocked out two questions in 22 minutes. Dennis, and what's the, what's the, two minute? what? You, twi <laughs> you twisted that around. Yeah. Um, you are not made other, for this what's game. What's the other one, the, the V one that? Um, Vienna? Yes. That's it. That's the two V ones that I want to go to. All right. And I want to go to a concert. I want to go to the opera there. Um, then I want to go fly fishing in Alaska. Okay, so here's the deal. We've got a few minutes left. Okay. We've got uh, a couple questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Okay, so uh, Tricia from Topeka, Kansas asks, when you were faced with challenges and tough opinions, mm -hmm. uh, how did you go about staying strong in your faith? Mm -hmm. What would you recommend for someone who's facing challenges to uh, and trying to grow it in their faith? I would say go read in um, Kings or Samuel and Kings 
and Ruth um, and Esther. And you'll start seeing this pattern of people that get off the sidelines in life and get into the thick of it, and they never stay unscathed. I mean, there will always be scars from life if you're doing anything. If you're not doing anything, then you probably can get by without being offended or challenged or anything like that. But if you get into the thick of it and you're going to do something with your life, you will you will face challenges. I think mm -hmm. I think life, um, you know, the adventures that we face kind of pull together into a quest. And you can either have a quest that's worth seeking out or you can sit back and just take whatever comes your way. And I've always been a little bit more of a find a goal and then and then press forward to that. You know, when you're navigating, whether you're on the ground or, or in the air, you need to know, first of all, where you are. And then you need to know where you want to go before you can ever set a course to get there. So if you know where you are and you have no goal, then you'll never get there. If you have a goal, but you really don't know what your what your toolkit is that you bring with you to life, or you need to know yourself a bit before you, you set a course for that goal. Okay, so we're down to um, a matter of a couple minutes. Okay, uh, not another game. We're gonna go over this again, and we'll see if we can get these right this time. Uh, so, takeaway okay. from the book. Someone, don't don't give them the answer because then they won't buy the book. But what uh, what do you want people to kind of take away? What are the big strong points of uh, of the book? Now you're asking me a question and telling me not to give the answer. <laughs> I'm not really sure that's a. Uh, don't give them the whole answer. Well, let me tell you that the. The takeaway from Nerves of Steel is, I think, in this day of, of taglines, mm -hmm. would be the gift of resilience. I think you'll see it in your own life, but that is woven through this book. And I think it's an encouraging book because sometimes when you look at someone and think, wow, they're so successful, and then you look behind, uh, behind them and realize, wow, they, you know, they had a few challenges, and then they had a few more, and then they had a few more. And how the adversity in the challenges, they groom you, they chisel you, they forge you into who you need to be. And not just to make the difference in a day and a moment, although sometimes that might be enough, but also a life of making a difference. But I do think you'll find, I think you'll probably see yourself a little bit when you go through these pages and realize um, if we're in human skin, we've got some things in common. Well, I will say in my completely unbiased opinion, you wrote a great book. Oh, I had a great in-house editor named Dean Schultz. Cut. <laughs> You're